of the great ministerial tragedies of the church is that most of our programs, most of our vision, most of what we do in the church is oriented to couples, to married couples in particular. We have seminars on marriage, we have seminars on raising children, we have teaching on how to be a biblical man, teachings on how to be a biblical woman. And a, a large part of our congregation is sitting there unmarried. Either they have been widowed, or they are single by choice, or they are single by divorce or separation. And that can be a very, very lonely place for someone to be sitting in the midst of a congregation where everything is geared toward the married. Hi, I'm Dr. Chuck Betters with Mark Inc. Ministries, and we exist for the purpose of addressing those questions of loneliness, those questions of despair, those questions of doubt. And I want to encourage you to visit our website at markinc.org. And thank you for visiting us here today on Ask Dr. Betters. I wish I had an answer to everyone's questions that would just simply make you feel better. But sometimes that's just not possible because your circumstance or your station in life is not known to me. And so I have to be somewhat generalistic uh, in answering a question such as this one. I'm alone. Everyone is always in pairs. The church seems geared toward married people. I think I'm going to be single for my whole life. Why would God want me to be single? I don't think that's a question that's peculiar to you. I think that's a question that's peculiar to a lot of people. Are you gifted with singleness? Now notice I said gifted with singleness because unless God has made that very clear to you that you have no desire to marry, you have no desire to be with someone else, that you have no attraction to the idea of marriage, uh, then probably you have the gift of singleness but then we have to address the question of what is the purpose of singleness? But most people are going to answer that question by saying, no, I'm, I want to marry. I, I'm looking for the right man. I'm looking for the right woman. And, and it's still very lonely to be in the church and look around at everyone who's with their spouse. But guaranteed this, I guarantee you this, not everyone you're looking at in couples is happy. Not everyone sitting around you that appears to be happy is really happy. Because you see, the second most important decision you will make in your life is whether or not to marry and who to marry. The second most important decision is only next to the most important decision, and that is whether or not you will, cr you will trust Christ as your Savior and Lord. And so choosing the right spouse, choosing the right person, it's critical. And here's the, here's the bad part. So many people, even those sitting around you in church who appear to have everything together, have actually married the wrong person. They have chosen in an unbiblical way their spouse. And that's why the Apostle Paul addresses all of this in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul was single. He may have been married and widowed, we don't know. But Paul was a single man and he looks around at all of the suffering in the world and all of the ways in which the church and God's people are going to be tested. And he commends those who are single to remain single, to remain as they are, not to seek to be married, but to embrace their singleness. He says this, to the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now he's speaking of a sexual relationship there. But Paul is saying fundamentally, if you're single, embrace that singleness. Later in 1 Corinthians 7, he says this beginning in verse 32. He says, I want you to be free from anxieties. Wouldn't that be wonderful? The unmarried man that's the single person, the unmarried man, the unmarried woman, is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. Well, that's the way it should be. If you're single, your anxiety should be, how am I going to use my singleness to advance the kingdom of God? And he explains that. 
He says, but the married man is anxious about worldly things. And any of you who are married understand what he's going to say next. How to please his wife. How to please her husband. Those are worldly cares. Married people have to be concerned about pleasing their spouse. And the interest, his interest or her interest are divided. So you're married to someone, you realized after the honeymoon is over, you realize that that person is a sinner just like you are. And that marriage is hard work. It's difficult work to remain married and to see that marriage grow and prosper. The single person does not have that care. And thus that frees them for some other things. And that's what Paul says next. He says, the unmarried or the engaged woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. In other words, unmarried people have a freedom that married people don't have. And that freedom is to use their time, their resources, their money, their talents in a way that you can't use them if you're married because you have other responsibilities. You have responsibilities to your wife, to your children, to your household. But unmarried people can devote themselves to building the kingdom of Christ in a way that married people cannot. And so the better, the better question or the bigger question for you is, how can I use my singleness to better advance the kingdom of God? What is the gift mix God has given me? What gifts do I have that I do not have to please my husband or please my wife? What gifts do I have that the church can use, that the kingdom of God can use to be advanced in a way that a married couple cannot? Paul would later say, whatever state you find yourself in, be content there. Contentedness is something that is very hard to find these days, especially given the culture in which we live where everything needs to be instantaneous. That identity and self-worth is wrapped up in the wrong things, wrapped up in your job, wrapped up in money, wrapped up in power, wrapped up in praise. And so our whole identity changes because we're trying to please the world. Well, scripture teaches us that God has called you either to singleness or to marriage or to wait. And either one of those states you find yourself in, you must learn to be content. I hope that you discover that gift. I hope that you discover what talent you have, what treasure you have, what opportunities you have but that couple sitting next to you in church doesn't have. And I would encourage the church to start addressing that person in the pew who is not married and encouraging them the same way the scripture does to learn the spirit of contentedness and to learn how to use your gift mix to advance the kingdom of God. I hope this helps.